Hey everybody, this is Dan from BeAGameCharacter.com and today we're going over sword and shield combat a la Skyrim. Alright, so the first thing you want to do with your sword and shield is you want to make sure that you assume the right stance. Alright, I've got my toes squared up, not pointed side too much, squared up and pointed on a slight angle. I've got my sword foot in back, my shield foot in front. Alright, because I want to cover myself with a shield until I'm ready to attack. So, I have my shield held up to the point where I can see over the edge of it but I can still block my face very easily and it's covering the entirety of my body here, if you see them. Facing the shield towards my opponent. I'm also not facing square on because I don't want to take blunt force straight on. I've got the angle here and then the sword side, all right, I want to hold the sword at an angle. You can see my arm's at about a 90 degree angle with the blade pointed directly towards his eye. The point of the blade towards your opponent's eyes. Alright, so now we're going to talk movement and combat. You'll notice my feet squared up. When I step, I'm either going to step wide or narrow in regards to my opponent. My opponent's right there in front of me. On the narrow step, basically my feet are in a straight line in regards to his position. On the wide step, I'm squaring up. So anytime I want to move, I want to keep my sword and shield in the proper position, and I'm moving narrow to wide. Narrow to wide. Notice that when I move, I'm on my toes, and as soon as I step, I plant. Once we've got the movement down, we need to think about attacking. All right, This is fine for walking around defense, but when I want to attack, I need to make sure I cross the X and get my sword foot in front. So if I'm attacking overhead, I come swinging overhead. See, I step from rear foot narrow, front foot narrow. All right, That's the overhead strike. But when I come to the side, I come in this way. If I'm thrusting, I step in and thrust. And on every one of those, you'll notice the shield covers the sword hand so that I'm protecting my arm as I swing. You can come from almost any angle, but you want to make sure that you protect yourself at all times because your sword is actually not that good a deflector. That's what you got the shield for. So now we're going to talk defensive maneuvers, okay? So if I'm being attacked, the last thing I want to do is this. Okay, that's a good way to get my shield broken, to miss the block entirely, take way too much force on my arm, you know, whatever. That's not what you want to do. That's not the way you use a shield properly. What I want to do is I let him attack and slip the attack, and then trap when he has my shield and strike. Or I want to be proactive and step in and jam the attack as he makes it before he has had a chance to execute the force, and then I can attack the inside of the arm here, or if he's not fast enough, I can come in and attack the head if he doesn't get his own shield up in time to cover. Okay, but again, watch the principles here. When he attacks, all right, and I step to slip, again, my shield foot is in front, still covering. My sword foot back here. I'm narrow. Then here I step wide to score up, cross over, jam. Then comes the sword. Right foot in front carrying the power. When I'm jamming him up from the proactive, I come up close here. Again, my hand is high, covering my head. Uh, this is what I want to trap here, right with the edge of the shield. I got this foot forward, and then I step in and strike, boom, get in this kitchen, take the head off. All right, you never want to just sit there and take the blow on the shield. These things are not as indestructible as you would think they are. And plus, there's always the chance you miss and then you lose your head. You always want to be either where the attack is not, or intercepting the attack before it happens. So we talked about the basics of defensive maneuvers, all right? Now we're going to talk about the basis of offensive maneuvers. I want to do a couple of things. First, I want to make him commit too much to a defense. So I want to come in for a feint for the head. He's going to raise the shield up. And I'm going to circle around and come back down and catch in the side. What I don't want to do is commit too hard to the feint, end up hitting the shield, and losing all the energy that I have behind that. And that is what he does want me to do. If he's going to go up to block that feint, he wants to stuff and follow through, counter before I have a chance to get my sword back around again, because now I'm stopped and he's going. We want to make sure that we do everything circular with the sword, because stopping this weight, stopping the momentum, is very difficult. It's going to slow us down in combat. So that's our feint. Next we're going to move on to just the straight thrust. Okay, the straight thrust, come right in, whoop. All right, again, covering with my shield the whole time. It's very hard to judge, because if you see when the sword comes at you, it's tough to judge depth perception off of the point of the sword. It's very hard to see it coming straight at you. Side strikes 
And overhead strikes are very simple to see, but straightforward strikes, very difficult. Okay, so again, I'm going to come step in here, boom, and that would be his defense, okay? He wants to drive that sword down, because when he does that, all right, if he gets stabbed, bad news. If he drives it down, we're both in a neutral position here. He's got his sword down, his shield down, the covering. I'm in the same position. We have to reset. It's very difficult to go from here. Come back up and set up again. The last one that we're going to work is the charge. I'm going to charge at him, inviting the strike to my head. I'm going to stuff, come here, slice, and fade away. We also call that the Darth Vader maneuver. But again, I come up here, I drive up, boom, grab, separate, fade away. His counter to that is to actually just follow through on the correct technique. He wants to cover that sword arm with a shield. So as I come in here, now again, neutral position. So in closing, those are the basics of sword and shield. There's a heck of a lot more. There's different styles of different styles of swords and shields. This is based off of a Scottish Highland broadsword and a Scottish targe. There's other types of shields, but this is the most common variant that you'll see in video games of sword and board type characters. So when you're working these, you want to find a partner if you can. It's always helpful. It's really easy to make these yourself. I've got this is an oaken board that we trimmed down and a piece of plywood with a belt and a handle. Not that difficult. Okay, but you want to make sure that you get a partner if you can, because that's going to give you the realism of the situation. And you want to take it slow, but you want to work up to the point where you can start working the drills with some real speeds so that you're building your real reaction time. So uh, that's it for today. You can always check out more at bgamecharacter.com and continue to be awesome. Thanks.